Hello, I'm the Eternal Newbie, and today I'd like to talk to you about perspective. It has always fascinated me how two people can get the exact same information and come to two completely different conclusions. D&D is not immune to this. For example, I was once called a murder hobo because I want to let a dugar run away after it attacked us. I don't think that's murder hoboing, but to some players, I am now king of the murder hobos. You know what, that's cool. At least I'm finally king of something other than destroying a bathroom. Now, I believe most definitions are valid. Or at least I did, until I found a vlog supposedly written about unwritten rules, but really about definitions of D&D terms that are just bat shit crazy. I am not going to link the blog for obvious reasons, but it is out there, people, and it is really easy to find. The first term is metagaming. Personally, I consider metagaming to be using information your character doesn't know to your advantage. This author has a uh, slightly different take. Metagaming is a situation in a tabletop role-playing game where your GM doesn't want you to do something so arbitrarily decides your character can't do that because they need prerequisite knowledge to be able to do that despite not putting any real mechanisms in place to have that prerequisite knowledge beyond perhaps an even more arbitrary knowledge role, which most of the classes in the game forfeit because the game skill system are so particularly asinine. Commas and periods, my guy. Reading that sentence was the mental equivalent of licking a running chainsaw. Despite that, and the Dead Sea levels of salt, I believe he kinda has a point. Occasionally, DMs decide your character wouldn't know something that maybe they would. For example, one DM decided we wouldn't know a troll had to be hit with fire or acid to prevent regeneration, since this is our first troll. Conversely, I decided the marital status of the DM's parents prior to his birth was in question, aka he's a bastard. My point is, if you go adventuring in areas where trolls live, it's probably not a secret that fire bad. More like Adventuring 101. The DM disagreed and would not let us use fire in any way because that's metagaming. He was adamant. Until he realized the troll was going to kill us if we couldn't burn it. That's when he decided to give us a knowledge check, which no one rolled higher than a 6 on, but apparently that was just enough to pass. My very convoluted point is, sometimes what is common knowledge and what is metagaming is a line that can be blurred. And in my case, the only reason we survived is the DM didn't want to kill the party. Not want to kill the party? Why the hell would any DM not want to kill the party? Oh, oh, stupid me, of course. I am so sorry. It's probably not the end of the story yet. Even so, knowledge checks are hella lame. Do it narratively. For example, I would totally have the troll light up a celebratory cigarette after downing newbie, and while vacationing in <sighs> flavor country, burn himself saying, Oh no, fire! My only weakness! Other than acid! That not only saves the party, but it sets your DMPC up for a killer one-liner. FYI, all good DMs have DMPCs. After the troll goes down, the DMPC is going to say, I told him smoking kills. And after everyone is done clapping, the story can continue. Next up is Murder Hobo, which our friend describes as, A situation in a tabletop role-playing game where your GM doesn't want you to kill a certain important NPC important to their plot, so they shame you for resorting to combat-based skills in a game where all your character abilities are focused towards combat. It further crops up when a GM opts to play a system with such a ridiculously high power level relative to the implied medieval fantasy world of the setting that the characters are literally demigod-like beings above the concerns of everything in the setting, so they don't need to care about the petty concerns of mortals because they're Dr. Manhattan wandering around 13th century Europe. Yes, I am talking about 5e. Jeez, dude, did the DM steal your waifu or something? Now, when I started reading this, I figured the author was some edgy teenager mad because the DM wouldn't let him kill random NPCs, but that level of 5e hate denotes an older man-child. Oh, that's a fun game. Let's see if we can guess who wrote this. Right now, with the cross between the wineness and the salt, makes me think it was... 
We're going to skip over fudging dice, which, surprise, surprise, Megatron thinks it's just something the DM does to screw over the party and take their agency. He expounds on this thought. There is no reason to ever fudge dice. Not even the same characters from death because, and I quote, Even if your players are literally children, they'll also be fine if their character dies most of the time. It's just a game. Damn. That is heartless. I've lost a character, or eight, and it sucks just about every time. Shocking that Megatron would lack empathy. You know, I don't think Megatron is evil enough. I'm changing my mind. We are talking about Calvin Candy from Django Unchained here. Okay, I don't know what this jerk is all about, but there are two times when fudging dice is acceptable. First, anytime I fail a roll. And secondly, if you're DMing and a player is about to die at the wrong time. Wrong time? God, newbie, you're such a moron. Everyone knows that players aren't supposed to die until you've proven how much better than them you are. That's why you start them off easy. Then you slowly ratchet up the tension until your players are totally invested in blammo. You drop a beholder on their asses. Unless, of course, they're high level. Then you drop 20 beholders riding ancient dragons up their butts. Then, and this is the most important part, as their bodies lay smoldering, you take a bow, do a victory dance, I personally prefer the icky shuffle, and go to Stucky's for a celebratory meal. Let's see what old Calvin thinks about railroading. And you just know this is going to be good. Dude has been blasting DMs the entire time on terms that have nothing to do with them, and now we finally got to a term that is about bad DMing. He is totally gonna have an aneurysm. I bet he starts talking gibberish he's so mad. Christmas has come early this year, people. A railroad is a situation in a tabletop game where a player doesn't like the particular lack of freedom in a certain situation. So, accuses the GM of railroading rather than realizing Everything inherently has some layer of restriction applied to it because that's how physics and geography work. Alternately, railroading is a situation in a tabletop role-playing game where a GM just can't be f***ed to stretch themselves beyond the narrow series of events that they have planned, so force their players to comply to that singular vision without any form of deviation. What. The. Funk. We finally. Finally, have a term that targets DMs, and Calvin decides to blame it on the players? Is this opposite day? It's up now down? Right is left? The Wheel of Time TV series is not a steaming pile of crap? Nothing makes sense anymore. I guess some people just want to see the world burn. You know, with this level of unpredictability, I'm going to change my guess. I now think this blog was written by the Joker. Oh no! Not the cool one, the Jared Leto version. We'll finish up with having fun. Wait, having fun? What the hell problem can anyone have with that? One of D&D's unwritten rules is any game where the players have fun is a success, and I like that rule. But let's see what Lane Joker has to say about this. Having fun is a justification used to defend bad systems and poor GMing practices since if four other people vaguely had a good time playing in a game, then this must mean the game is above all forms of criticism, because why would we want to elevate this thing we enjoy to anything beyond something children do for fun? Let me just say, Crappy Joker must be amazing at parties. Having fun isn't enough for him? Seriously, what is wrong with this guy? I wonder if this is him. Oh, of course. We're a little more progressive and ahead of the curve here in San Francisco. Um. I can't believe I'm saying this, but even Jared Leto's Joker is not this bad. Barely. I've got it, though. I have cracked the case. It was tricky, but there's only one villain who could be this evil. This insidious. This Wheel of Time TV series... Level of crappiness. So that was the Grinch's take on D&D terms. And I can honestly say, I have never seen a worse take. What about you? Have you seen someone think worse? Or, do you agree with the Grinch who stole enjoyment? Let me know with a comment. People love leaving their opinions on things, and I love reading them. So it's a win, win, win. 
Thank you so much for watching, and as always, play your character. Don't let your character play you.